Hi, I'm Jenna. Hi, I'm Michelle. Hi, I'm Siri. Hi, I'm Jamie. Project on Abraham Lincoln and the election of 1860. Lincoln was born on February 12, 1809. His home state was Illinois. His party was Republican, and he was president for four years until he was assassinated. His wife was named Mary Todd Lincoln. Mary's parents disagreed with her marrying Abraham because he had a poor background. He was the first president to be assassinated. He had deep depression, even though he would frequently tell stories and jokes to friends and family. He was the tallest U.S. president at six feet and four inches. The central issue to the election of 1860 was slavery. By this point, profound divisions already existed among Americans over the future course of their country. A major cause of these divisions was over the South's particular institution of slavery. After an unhappy turn in con Congress, Lincoln gave up on politics in the late 1840s. He later returned. In his home state of Illinois, he attacked legislation as well as Stephen A. Douglas of Illinois. Douglas ran for re-election in 1858. Lincoln opposed this. Douglas won, but the seven Lincoln-Douglas debates were mentioned in the media. This raised Lincoln's political profile. In 1859, Lincoln was invited to give a speech in New York City. In this speech, he denounced slavery. It made him an overnight political star. I am not preaching rebellion. I don't have to. This country with its institutions belongs to the people who inhabit it. Whenever they shall grow weary of the existing government, they can exercise their constitutional right of amending it or their revolutionary right to dismember or overthrow it. If the founding fathers gave us anything, they gave us that. <laughs> The purpose of the Dred Scott decision is to make property and nothing but property of the Negro in all states of the Union. It is the old issue of human rights versus property rights. Soon after his speech, he had ambition to lead the Republican part in Illinois. It evolved in desire to seek Republican nomination for president. The first step was to gain the support of Illinois delegation at the State Republican Convention in early May of 1860. Supporters located a fence that Abe helped build 30 years earlier. They painted the fence pieces with pro-Lincoln slogans and carried them to the Republican State Convention. Abe Lincoln's name went from Honest Abe to Rail Candidate. He gained the support of Illinois' delegation. In late May of 1860, a Republican Party convention was held in Chicago. Lincoln believed it was unseemly for a candidate to attend the convention, so he stayed home in Springfield. The favorite candidate was William Seward, a senator from New York, because he had a higher profile. Lincoln's supporters had a strategy. They assumed that Seward could not win on the first ballots, and Lincoln might gain voters on later ballots. It was based on the notion that Lincoln did not offend any particular fraction of the party as some candidates had, therefore people could come together around his candidacy. This worked. The first ballot, Seward did not have enough votes to win the majority. Second, Lincoln gained, but there was still no winner. On the third ballot, Lincoln won. He received the news by telegraph about his win. Members of the Republican Party had held rallies. Lincoln only appeared at one rally in Springfield. Here, Abe was mobbed by an enthusiastic crowd, but he was not injured. The Democrat Party was split up. The northern part was led by Stephen A. Douglas and the southern by John C. Breckinridge. Those who didn't feel they could support either supported John Bell. The election was held November 6, 1860. Lincoln did well in the northern states. Although he had less than 40% of the popular vote nationwide, he still won by a landslide in the Electoral College. Lincoln won ominously without any southern states. This was the most momentous election in American history. It came at a time of crisis. Right away after his election, assassination plots began. He was heavily guarded. So... What? Abraham Lincoln has formed our country today. If it wasn't for Abraham Lincoln, we could possibly still have slaves today. There are several monuments today to remember Lincoln and his accomplishments.